Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So in today's video, as you can tell by the title, we will be talking about this southern US snowstorm, really southern and kind of mid-Atlantic area snowstorm that will be occurring. It is a, uh, some people coined it a surprise snowstorm I saw or what's not. It's, it's definitely one that did spawn a bit more uh, spontaneously. It is a system that is powerful, potent, has a lot of things that could go um, I guess not as forecasted, and that could be either in a good or bad way, depending on which side of the snow-loving spectrum you stand on. But uh, yes, definitely an interesting system to say the least. A lot of snow could fall across certain areas, and I do want to go over that. A lot of rain as as well. And at the end of the video, I will go over kind of the long range, what to expect in the future. Kind of just all over the United States, not just this area of the southeast. But yes, if you live across the Midwest, the Northeast, right, I won't be spending too much time about this, uh, you know, those areas. I'll be mainly talking about this, uh, well... <clears throat> the southeastern United States uh, snowstorm for the most part and again there are still some things that are uh, very unclear or interesting about this so um, before we get into this I do want to say that if you guys are a uh, returning viewer or and you haven't yet subscribed or this is your first time viewing this channel check out the video obviously ch check out the channel and see if you do enjoy it and if you do um, then you could check out or then you could subscribe and like the video obviously don't do it just because I told you so but um, I'm just reminding you and if you have any comments or concerns Leave them down below. I always say this at the beginning of the video because I always forget towards the end, so I just decided to do, to do it at uh, the beginning, and I, and I always do. Let's start talking about this weather without further ado. First off, I, this is the radar, by the way. This is what it looks like right now, but I, I want to show you the National Weather Service <clears throat> Weather Ready uh, Nation Map. So this is the United States. I know I have Canadian viewers, right, but it doesn't forecast for the uh, Canada, the National Weather Service, as it is a, a government agency of the United States. And Canada is obviously a, a completely different country. Notice that we do have a lot of winter storm weather and kind of storm advisories. It's a winter storm. It's moving in across the northwest. And this is obviously producing a lot of um, <clears throat> a lot of concerns and a lot of chaos in terms of, uh, you know, obviously just dis disruptions and whatnot. Snow is pretty heavy. One to three, one to two, one to three. You can see, one to, I mean, just a pretty, pretty active, prolonged system here across portions of the northwest so again i did say about that southeast storm but you know there's activity in other parts of the country as well and uh, again a lot of cold as well across especially portions of the midwest i'm assuming these special weather statements are for um cold air though we'll, we'll have to see but yeah right there you can see sub-zero temperatures it's not enough to issue kind of a wind, wind chill watch but it is kind of the first very cold blast for some of these areas of the season so that's why uh, they're issued there notice we have winter storm or advisories warnings take a look at atlanta northern georgia right you're not really going to be seeing any snow but it is pretty close to you and if you go just a bit towards the north, right, especially as the northeastern part of the country or state, you could see uh, up to two, two inches. And I noticed that uh, further west, it is a bit weaker, the snow. As you saw on the radar, it's not as profound and it's still not as uh, intense. But you could see a widespread two to three, maybe a bit less, especially towards the Arkansas area of snow is potentially possible. And again, a lot of these areas currently are seeing, I think, some snow. Let's click on a location that seems to... Okay, so they're seeing freezing rain here, which again, it, that's a nightmare scenario. And you can see that they could see up to one to two inches uh, through tonight and this afternoon. I don't know if they're actually going to because they're seeing freezing rain. So maybe that precip type was a bit hard to forecast. And the National Weather Service... Uh, you know, it kind of just showed snow, but it actually turned into some freezing rain. It's a very tricky system, and you can see to the towards the south. By the way, you know, a lot of people are talking about the the, the cold side of this, but there are a lot of <clears throat> flood watches, coastal flood, um, or not coastal, just flood warnings, um, flood advisories, I should say, because um, those storms haven't yet reached their full potential. But you can see excessive runoff may result in flooding and whatnot. And even if your area is dry, you know, these storms are going to be constantly moving over the same area, potentially one after the other, and that's even if you're in a drought that could cause some flooding because the soil can only absorb so much uh, within a short amount of time there is a tornado watch as i'm recording this video again not a high threat but it is i think a two out of five there's a slight risk issued and of course towards the north there is that snowfall and this is why i want to start talking about this so um let's start uh, looking at this notice the southeast right there south carolina north carolina and into georgia we see quite a bit of rain and again it will most likely stay rain for these locations and if you're in Tennessee and you're seeing rain right now and you're like where's the snow oh it's gonna come it's just gonna be a bit later on notice Nashville is just about to start transitioning into snow it may have already I don't know the radar might be uh, a bit too aggressive with the snow and whatnot it's these systems are, are very 
aggressive, potent, and honestly, hard to predict. And that's why this system, some people are coining it as a surprise storm or kind of a, a spontaneous one. It is definitely more on the, the side of an abrupt uh, kind of one that came out of, uh, I guess, nowhere. But I, I wouldn't say it's a surprise one. I wouldn't go as far to say that because it, it has been shown in the weather models for the past few days, except most people thought it was just overblowing. And in fact, the weather models just said, no, we're, let's just make it even stronger. So let me show you the GFS and show you the future. So again, this is what it looks like right now. I would say that's a pretty fair estimate, maybe a bit overdone with the GFS on that snow but as I push this uh, forward notice that uh, we see that snow spread and it intensifies notice that thing this thing doesn't go far <clears throat> to the north and that's why it allows those snowfall amounts to get really maximized right here because we have a strong winds from the north and a cold air to the north so it's an enough air for that uh, rain to transition over to snow but this thing doesn't go to the north if it were to go just straight towards the north that would obviously bring more snow into indiana ohio right the areas kind of on the western flank of it but these areas would most likely just see rain so you should be thankful for that if you are seeing snow out of the system because otherwise this particular track of the system is very favorable for this and notice that right some of the snowfall fall we're already seeing is pretty heavy but that is just going to intensify. Look at some of these colors. Extremely powerful, they're intense, and lots of snow. A lot of rain, and sometimes I think there will be even thunder snow, because a lot of, I've seen a lot of uh, stories and whatnot regarding that, and I do think that thunder snow is definitely gonna, if it's gonna occur, it's gonna be this storm. You can see there are just straight up thunderstorms right on that rain snow line. There are gonna be uh, producing very heavy amounts of snow in a short amount of time. Notice the snow does end up working its way into the mid-Atlantic, DC, just kind of on the border, Philadelphia, also New York City. Light snow, there has been a slight trend towards the north, so I wouldn't be surprised if New York City does see higher amounts than what they're currently forecasted, which I don't know exactly what their forecast is. I'll check that out in a second. But notice the system, you know, skim escape cod, it doesn't hit the northeast, but it does get a bit more, uh, further towards the north than, say, uh, from 24 hours ago, the models thought it would. And also, the system's just overall stronger. So, yes, it's done. By tomorrow in the morning, this thing's done. I will track it out hour by hour in just a minute for you. But I'm using this model to show you kind of what the models are thinking <clears throat> in terms of the snowfall. Now, this is a lot of snow. And I think some of these amounts are overdone. And let me explain to you why. Um, and that's assuming that this exact scenario does occur. Because if a scenario that, you know, this system strengthens or slow down, these amounts may be possible but just given the scenario that we just saw these may be higher simply because the snow as you saw i mean it's going to be super wet because this thing is literally thunderstorms <clears throat> transitioning into a, a snow so the flakes are going to be massive wet heavy i think some of these snowfall ratios could be five maybe even six seven to one so these ten to one that's assuming a ten to one that's that's a moderately fluffy snow kind of occurring at around 30 degrees this will be won't be falling at 30 degrees it will be quite a bit warmer that's why i think some of these it will be impressive but the 16 inches um is you know or a foot uh, widespread is just not gonna happen i think there will be amounts maybe close to uh 10 11 where that where that 16 is it's probably a 10 assuming a more accurate snowfall ratio and just to drive my uh point home i'm gonna open up um the the radar again and i just want to show you that at this current time when it's snowing across virginia let's take a look at the temperature <clears throat> two meter temperature shaded and i want to show you that you can see it's barely barely freezing across some of these locations in some areas it's actually falling above freezing uh the snow and that's mainly uh northern north carolina and into portions of that southern portion of virginia let me zoom out from this a bit more so you could see this and again that's the temperature and you can see a lot of these areas will be seeing snow so, uh in that in that marginally or very very warm temperatures for a snowfall obviously and then um that does move away so i will show you some other models and let me tell you that they're all pretty darn aggressive i think the national weather service may still have to up some of the snowfall amounts despite the snowfall ratios being a bit you know lower than what this 10 to 1 is you can see the nam shows a lot this is a bit less than the latest gfs but very similar areas it does bring a bit into georgia maybe a bit further towards the south i don't think it will be that much further to the south as the nam shows let me show you another model right um the rgem is high res canadian i just want to show you as many scenarios as possible to show you the different tracks notice the difference between this one nam doesn't bring as much into southern jersey this one the rgem brings a lot more into southern jersey and into kind of central delaware big storm for you guys this is it this is that big one that <clears throat> you guys have been uh 
kind of wanting for a while these folks here because last year there was a lot of systems towards the north but a lot of this area kind of got missed out canadian and more global long range model you can see shows a very similar track so you can see the track is actually pretty darn consistent with most models there are a few differences and a few cities that see a bit less see a bit more but for the most part i mean you know it's not occurring that far out so you'd hope that the track would say the same but you can see even within the last few hours this or last few model runs say of this one you can see there's been a northern northern trend and let me show you that with the gfs right you can see the gfs from a day ago or a couple of the model runs ago you can see it was started from the south and went towards the north it definitely intensified though and look at what just a few days ago it showed just a little blob of nine inches and that was rather small and that kept decreasing and then all of a sudden boom this thing turned into a monster so um yeah it definitely a significant system a major winter storm and i want to show you one more model a european model let me sh show you how much uh, snowfall there could be from this system let's bring this forward and boom right there you could see widespread swath of over a foot assuming a 10 to 1 ratio which some of these will be a bit lower probably long island the tip tippity tip could be seeing even or up to close to six inches again very sharp gradient so we'll have to see how far north this gets it's a very, very, very tricky forecast. You can see Philadelphia, according to this, gets in on almost six inches or four, four to six inches. Will they? It's hard to tell. Um, the, the models, even if they are accurate, it's just it, that's almost impossible to kind of pinpoint in, in any weather forecast, no matter the confidence, such a small gradient. And uh, now that I'm actually on this website, I do want to show you the GFS again. I already showed you this model and its snowfall amounts, but here I can click on Kuchera. So this uses kind of the correct snowfall ratios. And notice that some of them will be a bit lower with the Kuchera ratio. Um, you can see that there is a bit of a decrease right there. There's certain, I mean, you can see that the, the GFS still shows over a foot for many areas. It's just maybe not as much. It increases for the mountains. You can see 26 inches right there. But again, some of the snow will be falling in a pretty warm temperatures, but... Um, a 10 to 1, I guess, uh, is I actually, I'm honestly surprised. I was assuming that the ratios would be a bit lower than this. But again, um, I do think that this system could still even be stronger than what we're seeing at right now. You know, and ra ratios aside, whatever, I think that there could be just more precip squeezed out even than what the, the models are showing. As again, almost each set of model runs have been just intensifying the storm after storm. You can see what the NAM 12KM shows with the Kuchera. Yeah, you could see it decreases some of those amounts. 10 to 1 shows a foot right there, 14 inches, and Kuchera shows quite a bit less. So that's something to keep in mind. It Keep in mind, um, again, Kuchera right there, 10 to 1 shows a bit more. So those are the different models, and I do want to show you the National Weather Service office, just to kind of show you where the warnings are, or and the office, I should show you the offices. And let me just show you how much snowfall they kind of show from office to office. Obviously, here they show a lot, especially in the foothills right into, um, or really, yeah, where Tennessee borders into North Carolina. Potentially over uh, over 10, maybe even 11 inches of snow uh, right in the mountain. Gatlingburg, 6 to 8. Uh, you know, Greenville, six, 4 to 6. So, decent amounts, especially towards the mountains. Here in northern Alabama, there are winter storm warnings. I'm assuming it's it's Huntsville. You can see a pretty decent city, right? A large city, that's what I meant when I said decent. Uh, 1 to 3 inches, definitely enough to issue winter storm warning further towards the south. 1 to 3 in the north may not seem like a lot, but for southern folks, that is definitely a, a good amount of snow. Notice this is the expected snowfall for the northwestern kind of uh, in Virginia, Blacksburg. You could see a widespread 4 to 6 with even some amounts in a 6 to 8. Uh, as you get further towards uh, closer towards kind of West Virginia and as you go towards northern uh, Virginia right so this is northern central Virginia um, it looks as if there we go there's our snowfall forecast let me see if I could zoom in on this you could see four to six three to four I would say these are pretty pretty good amounts uh, pretty good amounts from the National Weather Service but again I, I wouldn't be surprised if some of these are a bit higher just because of how quick the system kind of blew up in intensity. Let's see, <clears throat> sorry about that. Let's see what this uh, weather service shows, or the, what is this one, the Philadelphia one. I don't can't find it. a snowfall overall kind of forecast. So let's see right there. Click here for briefing. I'm assuming it will be here. And you can see they, they do show a bit for Philadelphia 1 to 2. And again, that gradient is probably a lot sharper than what the National Weather Service shows here. So that could go from 4 to 6 to Philadelphia or really just nothing. And likewise for New York City and, and wherever else. So, uh, yeah. And you can see there are some coastal flood advisories for the strong winds that will be blowing off the coast, kind of adding to that insane precip. But I do want to show you now time it out hour by hour. Let's go back to the HER model and let's and let's see what this one shows. So let's bring it to 5 o'clock, which is right now. I would say it does a pretty good job of showing that snow band. Good feature, right? It has that right there. We have that 
kind of two distinct areas of precip almost disconnected the, the herd shows that and notice the snow <clears throat> it snows it's continuing and as we put this into the overnight hours notice that we do see the system intensify a lot tennessee boom we see that snow band growing we see that low pressure dropping or that pressure dropping and becomes a lower pressure a lot of storms here that's where we have that severe weather threat that feeds right into that snow very copious amounts of very heavy snow could be falling in a short amount of time notice that by 1 a.m areas in northern virginia could be already getting in on some of this as kind of the northern half of the system starts transitioning over to snow and then from two one you know three four five some of these areas may not be seeing snow for more than a few hours but this snow will be falling potentially one to even two maybe 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 two and a half inches of snow per hour in the heaviest of bands and that could obviously <clears throat> lead to uh well quick amounts in a short amount of time and you can see that by seven right six five it's across virginia delaware new jersey and then by tomorrow really 12 a.m or sorry once we get towards noon it's done in the southeast kind of the mid-south it's still occurring across the north carolina again this doesn't seem like significant amounts and it, you know i guess north carolina will get missed out for the most part but you still could get a brief shot of one to two inches from the backside precip but notice delaware right maryland new jersey they just get clobbered by this for um almost yeah through through noon and even into the midnight or sorry after the noon hours and by <clears throat> by really tomorrow in the, uh, afternoon so 24 hours from right now when i'm recording this video which is 6 44 eastern time 5 uh, 44 central this thing's done so you know it's a quick hitter if you will right but again some of these rates will be impressive especially for folks that haven't seen snow of such proportions in at least a few years uh for some of these areas at least and you can see that, that again the her shows decent amounts of snow up towards the foot in some areas tennessee picking up widespread amounts of maybe kind of two to four which again the national weather service thinks it'll be a bit less but uh, i think that's a good possibility and i do want to show you the northeast with this her model because um it does bring a pretty uh, close towards say boston it doesn't bring any actually into boston but it is it is um uh, some into nantucket cape cod long island doesn't get anything out of this one and i could actually show you the evolution of the storm and show you how tight that gradient is it just seems you know that oh it will just slide up the northeast coast but it doesn't it just keeps towards the south and obviously you know that 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 that, that the fact that it does that it kind of keeps itself to the south it gets pressured up against this is what makes those snowfall amounts really impressive for a lot of these locations and again every model supports this let me show you another high-res model it's a slightly different one i don't like this model as much but i think it does a pretty good job and look again it's a fast run through of the events and it's just extreme snowfall rates it does bring more into new york city and say maybe even boston not by uh, you know not by a huge margin but a few inches even for new york city according to this model which Maybe a bit overdone, but we'll have to see. Again, these trends are still coming in. It's a pretty quick developing system. And you can see some models really just show a lot of snow. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, and um, so, yeah, that's basically... We'll just uh, have to monitor this and see what exactly occurs from uh, this as again sometimes the snowfall amounts from systems can be underperforming or overperforming and for those that are wondering you know if you live across iowa missouri illinois indiana michigan and you saw that first wave of the system um then you probably uh well that system underperformed yesterday for many locations across the midwest the first wave of the same really kind of part of the storm that's affecting the mid-atlantic today it's um you know the, i think the national Ser weather service did a good job with it nonetheless it was a very tricky system and i did in yesterday's video mention that you know there is a weakening trend i, I think the amounts may be a bit overdone i definitely did not call it i don't want to be giving myself credit where i don't deserve it and saying that oh i i definitely knew it was going to underperform i still expected there to be much more snow than what occurred but um yeah it was a pretty big margin i think the last time the national weather service almost missed it by 100% um, um, incorrect margin here in, in our area was a, a while. And proof of that is, you know, we were forecasted to have around eight, nine inches and we got around four. So, you know, we got snow, but uh, definitely a margin of error. And uh, yeah, you know, the system does seem, I think that there's gonna be more confidence and there isn't uh, like any model that kind of weakens it. Uh, last time it was a European that started weakening right before that system occurred. This time around, it's about occurring. The, 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 you know, every model shows a good, strong system. No signs to be kind of worried about a bust if you're worried about that. But if you don't want snow, then I guess you should be worried because yeah, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. A pretty good event is coming. Now I did say I'll go over a bit of the long range and again, 
again for specific amounts if i didn't go over your city or whatnot please go to the local national weather service they you know they they know what they're doing and they'll definitely bring you up to date with that i can't go every city every spot because i have a limited uh, time frame here but while this is occurring i just want to say that there is another storm moving into the northwest and this will be bringing a bit of a warm-up because it spills into the plains doesn't have a cold front but it does drag air from from the south it brings it a bit of a warm air for especially the areas that saw that snow could deal with a bit of <clears throat> snow melt and i notice a bit of snow for well minnesota northern plains they haven't seen snow in a while there and they will finally will and you can see it's a wind driven beast lake effect off lake michigan maybe some sort of a northeast kind of uh, coupling with that system we'll have to see we do have a lot of moisture you can see just this flow into nebraska kansas maybe again and at this point any anywhere past 100 mo mo hours the the models just go all over the place and this is just one certain model the gfs and i'm just showing you that the pattern's active again some rain some snow some cold some very actually warm air potentially as well it's it's all changing all changeable and we'll have to see what the pattern uh, establishes it, it, it itself as the models, I would say, as a general, show a bit of a warm-up around maybe the 10th of January. It lasted for a few days, but then towards the end, around the 20th, actually a bit before the 20th, another potentially colder kind of pattern setting up. So we'll have to see, but I mean, you can see there isn't a massive snowstorm in the near future from the GFS other than the one we're dealing with right now. But as you see from the Canadian right there, right, that's excluding the Northwest because the Northwest will be getting impacted. But at least not, not a single one that does form across the U.S. because that's more of a clipper, not a massive system. It is strong though. And you can see what the Canadian does though. It takes that energy that the GFS showed kind of dissipate and it does develop a significant storm out of that. And that would be a nor'easter of a pretty good proportion. So we'd have to wait and see for that. And again, uh, you can see there's a little systems here and there, a bit of cold, a bit of warmth. So the models are, again, a, a bit of disagreement. And if I were to show you the European, it takes on its even own, uh, kind of uh, its own additional third twist and makes it a bit even more confusing. You can see that, again, there's our system across the south. There's a northwest. We see that, that clipper storm. Uh, you know, it does develop a cold front uh, across the northeast, but doesn't really affect it. There's that band of snow that the Canadian developed a nor'easter out of. You can see the European definitely more in line with the Canadian. does show a system, pretty strong one. And then anything afterwards, it's a bit, again, it's just complete chaos. Whether or not the models agree or not, you can see it show, shows a system further towards the north. Bit of cold air behind it, bit of a warm-up maybe. We'll have to see. It's, it's all changeable and again. Uh, at this point... It's, it's, it's a bit hard to tell what will exactly happen. Um, so yeah, that's basically it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. Hopefully you're more up to date with what the system will do. Definitely a powerful one. Um, a, a more of a surprising one. But again, don't be surprised if your location, say, in Northern Virginia, right now you're checking it. You live in Charlottesville. And you, you check your forecast and you're supposed to get 1 to 2, 3 to 5. And you end up even with uh, potentially up to close to 10 inches. And while this does forecast, what, 4 to 7, you know, that wouldn't be a huge margin of error. Uh, with such a system like this, it, it, one hour of additional snow at such heavy rates that this snow will be falling as could produce, you know, that overperforming scenario, which right there is a possibility. All right, that's it, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. See ya. Bye.